now that we've simplified all of our rational expressions by just simplifying fraction or multiplying, dividing, adding, and subtracting, we're going to use all of that to actually solve these rational expressions and actually get answers for x. So to start with, I want to solve this equation that's got an addition on this side, and it's set equal to 1 fourth. So I'm going to find my common denominator for all three of my fractions. Okay, so I'm going to find something that uh, 24, 3 minus x, and 4 all go into. Well, to start with, 4 and 24, they go into each, or 4 goes into 24. So part of my common denominator is going to have to be, let me change colors, is going to have to be a 24. And then 3 minus x and 24 don't go into each other, so my common denominator is going to be 24 times 3 minus x. So if the first one is just missing 3 minus x, the second one's missing 24, and the third one's missing the 3 minus x, and to get 4 to 24, we multiply by 6. Once I have figured out what everything's missing to get that common denominator, I don't need my denominators anymore because I have an equal sign and I'm trying to figure out x. So then I'm just going to multiply, but I'm going to write it out first so we don't skip any steps. So 5 times 3 minus x plus 2 times 24 equals 1 times 6 times 3 minus x. So 5 times 3 minus x is 15 minus 5x. 2 times 24 is 48. And then 1 doesn't do anything. 6 times 3 minus x is 18 minus 6x. Over here, I've got 15 and 48, which is going to give me 63. So I have negative 5x plus 63 equals 18 minus 6x. Then I'm going to add 6x. So over here, I get x plus 63 equals 18. Subtract the 63, which gets me to 45. All right. Now, the only difference is we've got to start looking with what we call extraneous solutions. So to find our extraneous solutions, I'm going to have to go back to my denominators. And the one thing that we can never divide by is zero. All right. We cannot divide by zero. So I'm going to come back to my denominators and see what values would make my denominator zero. Well, 24 can never be zero. So that one's good to go. And 4 can never be 0, so it's good to go. So the only one I have left is 3 minus x. So for 3 minus x to be 0, I have to subtract 3. So negative x equals negative 3. Divide by negative 1, x equals 3. So if I plug in 3 for x, I would get a 0 for a denominator. So that means that for my problem, x cannot be 3. And I got 45 for my answer which is not 3, so I'm good to go. All right, for this example, I don't know what happened to my answers here, so we'll ignore this. For this example, I've got a 2, x minus 1, and a 2. Well, the 2s go into each other, so part of my common denominator is definitely going to have to have a 2 in it. And then x minus 1 and 2 don't go into each other, so my common denominator is going to be 2 times x minus 1. All right, now while we're here, I'm going to go ahead and figure out what x cannot be. So if I look, the 2 and 2 will never be 0, because they're always going to be 2. So x minus 1, for that to be 0, x minus 1 equals 0, x would have to be a positive 1. So I'm going to keep that in mind, that x cannot be 1 whenever I'm solving this. All right, so the first fraction is missing the x minus 1. The second fraction is missing the 2. And the third one's missing x minus 1. Once I figure out what everything needs, I don't need my denominator anymore. And so we get 5 times x minus 1 plus 3 times 2 equals 1 times x minus 1. 5 times x minus 1 is 5x minus 5. 3 times 2 is 6. 1 times x minus 1 is x minus 1. Negative 5 plus 6 is a positive 1. I'm going to get my x's on the same side. So I get 4x plus 1 equals negative 1. Subtract 1. 4x equals negative 2, divide by 4. So then x equals negative 1 half. I said x could not be 1, so negative 1 half works. All right, then we've got a p plus 1, a p minus 1, and this is also a fraction, 
it's just over 1. All right, so p plus 1, p minus 1, and 1, they don't go into each other at all. So that means that my common denominator is going to be multiplying them all together. Well, 1 doesn't do anything, so I'm just going to multiply by p plus 1 times p minus 1. So the first one's missing p uh, minus 1. And the second one's missing p plus 1. And then the third one's missing both of them, p plus 1 and p minus 1. All right, then I don't need my denominators. So I'm just going to write it out first. So I get p squared minus p minus 5 times p minus 1 equals p squared minus 7 times p plus 1 plus p times p plus 1 times p minus 1. Now we've got to do some foiling, right? So the first one, I've got to do p squared times p, which is p cubed. p squared times 1, negative p squared. Negative p times p, negative p squared. Negative p times negative 1, positive p, negative 5p, and positive 5. All right, over here, we got p cubed plus p squared minus 7p minus 7. All right, and for this one, I'm going to rewrite p times p plus 1 as p squared plus p. I'm going to go ahead and distribute that. Now I've got to do p squared plus p times p minus 1. So we get plus p cubed minus p squared and then plus p squared minus p. All right, I'm going to combine my like terms on both sides. So over here we have p cubed and then negative 2p squared and then minus 4p plus 5. All right, over here I've got p cubed plus p cubed. So we get 2p cubed. And then I've got p squared minus p squared, which is 0, plus p squared. So I just have positive p squared. Then I've got a negative 7p and a negative p to get negative 8p. And then minus 7. All right, so now I'm going to keep solving. So I'm going to subtract the 2p cubed over. So we get negative p cubed. <clears throat> I'm going to subtract the p squared over. So we get negative 3p squared. I'm going to add the 8p. So we get 4p. And I'm going to add the 7. So we get 12 equals 0. All right, one way of solving any equation is to factor, and this one's got four terms, so we're going to factor it by grouping. So on the left-hand side, my GCF is going to be a negative P squared, and that's going to leave me with P plus 3. And on the right side, we got a positive 4. It's going to leave me with P plus 3. So then I got uh, negative P squared plus 4. And p plus 3. All right, this one, even though it looks funny, I can always rearrange my addition. So this is the same as 4 minus p squared. So then I can factor that to be 2 plus p, 2 minus p, difference of squares. And then that p plus 3. All right, then to actually solve, I set them equal to 0. So then this one, I would say p equals negative 2. This one, p equals positive 2. This one, p equals negative 3. All right, now I just got to see if there's any extraneous solution. So I'll come back to my denominators up here. The 1 will never be 0, so that one's good. And then my two values that would make p plus 1 and p minus 1 0 are going to be negative 1 and positive 1. So p cannot be negative 1, positive 1. None of my answers are negative 1, positive 1, so they're all good. All right, and then for the last one, I've got this. I got a, a binomial here that's already factored out. I can't do anything else to it. Then I have this quadratic. So if I factor this quadratic really quick, I want to multiply to negative 8, add to 2. So that's going to be x plus 4, x minus 2. All right, and then if you notice, my other uh, denominators are x minus 2 and x plus 4, and both of which go into this big quadratic here. A lot of times, that's what's going to happen. So my common denominator is just x plus 4, x minus 2. 
And then while we're looking at it, the two values that would make my x or my denominator 0 would be a positive 2, negative 4. So I can't have those as my answer. All right, so my first uh, fraction over here is missing the x plus 4. The second one's missing the x plus uh, minus 2. And the third one has both of them, so I don't have to do anything to it. And I don't need my denominators anymore. So we get x times x plus 4 equals 2 times x minus 2 minus 2x. x times x plus 4 is x squared plus 4x. 2 times x minus 2 is 2x minus 4 and then minus 2x. 2x minus 2x is 0, so I end up with x squared plus 4x equals negative 4. I'm going to add the 4 over, set it equal to 0 because it is a quadratic. So x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 0. And I can simplify this by factoring. Multiply to 4, add to 4, that's 2 and 2. And then to solve, set them equal to 0 or change their signs. So I get x equals negative 2 and negative 2, or just negative 2. And it's not 2 or negative 4, so I stop. And my answer is negative 2.